Okay, we're on. So I was asked a question on temptations and um, if you come from a 12-step group, uh, it would be obvious what your temptations are. I come from a food fellowship, so donuts, sugar, cakes, chocolates. Uh, you don't have to be very clever to know that's a temptation. Um, uh, but later on, now, if anyone is pursuing enlightenment, you know, one of the things to resolve temptation is what level of consciousness do you pursue? You've got to be clear on what is your, what is your spiritual intention for this lifetime. Now, like, if your spiritual intention, if you're interested in Hawkins and you're interested in the highest level of enlightenment, then your intention is set to complete enlightenment. If you, if you intend in complete enlightenment in this lifetime, and that's your intention, and then you want to go, as Hawkins says, the, the path is narrow, waste no time. Yeah, so that actually becomes very, very easy to, uh, to know temptation, because nearly everything's a temptation. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, um, if you seek, um, the next level that Hawkins talks about is unconditional love. You don't want to be enlightened. You don't want to be like in a non-dual place. You don't want to have transcended the world, but you want to be like a saint, sort of a sainthood type thing. You want to practice love, uh, to practice being of unconditional love in every single moment, no matter what. You know, someone steps on your toe, you're still going to be in love. Someone calls you uh, whatever, you're still going to stay in love around that, no matter what happens. So that's, but it's not enlightenment, but that's your pathway. So then temptations become very easy. What's your, what's your sole intention, shall we say, for this lifetime? If your intention is just to be a, a valuable member or shall we, a useful member of society, shall we say, then your intention might be sort of like, you know, 480, 500, something like that, not quite sainted. So then you, have, then you resolve what is temptation. Like if, if my intention is just to be a normal member of society and someone says, uh, do you want to join, like what kind of hobbies could I, could I do in the 400s? I mean, I could probably, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something. Uh, let's say, um, uh, so I thought of something. Yeah, I could be like a Bitcoin program. I could be like a <laughs> cryptocurrency. I could join up a meetup group on programming languages for cryptocurrencies. Now, and I could learn several books full of cryptocurrencies and, and buy several video programs of how to program cryptocurrencies. Now, in terms of, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's probably in the 400s, shall we say. It's quite intellectual. Uh, and my ego will enjoy it. This is fun, isn't it? You know, it's quite like I can make up a new cryptocurrency and whatever. I can spend the next 10 years going to meetup groups and cryptocurrencies and programming languages and learning. And, and so in the context of that's my intention for this life, just to be a, a normal member of society, then that's not a temptation. If you're, I mean, if, you're, if, you, if you want to be a saint or practice unconditional love, then I would say, you have to, don't take me in the wrong way, but you could say that's a temptation from your path mm -hmm. of, 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 of pursuing, reaching unconditional love by the end of this lifetime. Mm -hmm. If I've got to spend 10 years in meetups on cryptocurrency development and speaking to friends around cryptocurrency development, it's, made, it's not a, a non-integrous thing, but it won't set me to my goal uh, for this lifetime of being a saint, you know, or unconditionally loving. Yeah, so if my set is enlightenment, then the attraction to, you know, going into cryptocurrency programming languages, I mean, it would be, in my view, it would be, for that goal, you could say, it would be a temptation. I'm going to spend 10 years, uh, and most of the people in this place are going to be at that a certain calibration. You know, they might be in the 400s or whatever. So I'm going to be around people in the 400s in their head, doing things in the 400 and spending hours and hours of time with them in the 400s when I want to be totally free. So I'd say it's a temptation from that. So, so if, you, if you practice the observer, I'm not saying that anyone should practice being in the observer or full enlightenment, but then it becomes even more narrower because nearly anything that then becomes like a, that activates the ego uh, um, is uh, when you do things, if, if it requires transcendence, and you don't need to do it, then it's a distraction. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. You know, like for me to transcend something in the world, it takes work, 
to make everything meaningless in a situation around a certain subject area and a certain social group. You know, for me, if I was to go into a certain area <coughs> where there, there is stuff which might, is not meaningless to me, it will take me some, some weeks, months or years to make everything meaningless, so I stay in the observer state, you know. So, uh, certain things will be easy, certain things are easy to do in the observer, and certain things take a lot of work to transcend. You know, if I was to try, you know, I, w I had no inclination of going back in the stock market, you know, uh, and, and be in the observer in the stock market, you know, it just doesn't resonate. Um, so certain things are more subtle, and I think the question was asked more in the subtle things. Um, but you know, everything is quite. If you, I mean, if you, t I mean, for me, there's the two major pathways uh, with spirituality: unconditional love, and uh, and enlightenment. Those are the two main things. Otherwise, you can choose just to be a normal person in the world. That's okay. But those are the two major spiritual pathways. If you seek strong spirituality in the world. So then you resolve it through that. Um, I mean, what about hobbies and things and stuff like that? Well, certain hobbies probably wouldn't would be quite effortless in, in maintaining an attitude of unconditional love with the observer. I guess, you know, like, um, I always said, like, if I had to work, I'd be nice to, you know, like, I went into um, St. Paul's Cathedral, and there are these people just standing around there making, like, like and just saying, like, you just walk this way or, or something. Mm. And they're just sitting, in, you know, just standing. And I think they get a paycheck at the end of the month for just sitting in, you know, just standing in St. Paul's Cathedral and just doing not much, really. I thought that would be a great job if I had to get a paycheck. And I th can you do that job in the Observer? Yes. I mean, that's pretty. Would I have to do a lot of work to transcend that environment? No. You know, so those would be the type of thing. If I had to work, I would choose work which is very conducive. Or if I had to get a hobby, or if I felt there was a spiritual group to join, I'd probably be, you know, intuitively, I would choose things which are, con which are in resonance with the observer. Or if, you know, if I was choosing unconditional, I would choose things that are unconditional. And certain things, it would feel like, you know, like for me, like sometimes I, you know, I... Because, you know, to can you know, I talk about cancelling beliefs, which was something Hawkins did, The Course in Miracles. God did not create it, so it's not real. That's work. If I have to do that for a, a period of time to make something meaningless, if I have to, like, keep looking at my boss and say you're meaningless for hours and hours, that's a lot of work to do. Now, if my boss is a saint in a, and I'm working in a spiritual setting, there's no work to be done. So that's how I resolve... You're resolving subtle things. You know, like, sometimes it can be like, do I work, like, let's say something subtle. Do I work in an art gallery or in a cathedral? So which one is, which one is the right discernment? You know, but I think you energetically go. Like, if I went for an interview with the director of the art gallery and I went for an interview with my boss at the cathedral, uh, and you, you intuitively pick up or you pray, you pray to the Holy Spirit for spiritual discernment, which one... But, you know, sometimes when you go to environments, you can sort of pick up whether there, there's an ego charge. Mm -hmm. You know, your mm -hmm. boss looks a bit, you know, spiritual organization, but your boss looks a bit nuts. And there's something stressful in this environment. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the cathedral and the, the guy's blissed out and everyone looks serene. And you go, okay, which is the one I'm going to choose? It's kind of, I think it's going to be a hard choice, but, you know, you want the thing. So... But I think there is a thing that the ego always will try and sabotage. Because the ego is attracted to drama, the ego is attracted to excitement, the ego is attracted to things, you know, like my ego doesn't like peace and serenity and stillness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been like, you know, oh, it's, this one's more exciting, there's more drama going on in here, there's more mm -hmm. ups and downs. But that's like, so you've got to like spiritually discern, like, because when you're going more spiritual, the higher the vibration, it's more like nothing's happening. It's more serene, it's more peaceful. There's nothing for your ego to go on and up and down with. You know, if you're going to go to a workplace, it's like everything's serene and peaceful all the time. Everyone's like, everyone's pissed out. Or you're going to the, you know, like the, the stock market's like a, like a roller coaster. You know, but the ego is attracted to, to, to roller coasters, drama to difficult relationships, to difficult jobs, 
because the ego says, well, this is exciting. I mean, who, who wants to watch a film of clouds, clouds passing in the sky for one hour? Anyone want to see a film on that? You know, mm -hmm. or grass growing. <laughs> I mean, it's like you're not going to, the ego's not entertained. The ego's not going to be entertained by something which is serene and peaceful and blissful. But that, for the spirit, you know, the spirit will be. So you've got to make that spiritual discernment. So if there's, I think with spiritual, with very close spiritual discernments, those, uh, I intuit because I know that my, if my ego is bored, that's a good thing. Yeah? If my ego is bored, you know, if my ego goes, there's going to be no excitement, there's going to be no drama, it's going to be serene and peaceful, non-stop, everyone's nice to each other all the time, then my ego go well, you know, it goes, well, where's the excitement in that? So it's going to go, so spiritually I'll discern, well, I know, I'll intuitively know that the one where my ego is not going to be entertained is good for me. And the one which is going to pull into the drama, the adrenaline, uh, <clears throat> all the ups and downs, the crazy personalities, that's the one my ego will be attracted to. But that's the one... So if there's two things, they'll, be, they'll have a slightly different vibration, you can pray for discernment as well. Uh, I pray for a miracle and spiritual discernment to the Holy Spirit that it be revealed to me and that I see in truth uh, the difference between job A and job B. Yeah? And then go to the observer, feel any feelings out. Because, like, let's say there is an attraction to the exciting job and there's an aversion to that serene, boring peaceful, blissed out job. But then, if you feel the feelings of, distract, of excitement out, yeah, feel the feelings, go to the observer of that excitement and that attraction to that exciting adrenaline job, uh, and then and to fully transcend it, then you, you, your spirit will choose. But if you choose without processing, so that, sorry, yeah, that's what it, so if you have to make a, an important choice, process before you choose, pray, to the Holy Spirit for spiritual discernment, or if you're in 12 steps, pray for knowledge of God's will around job A to job B and the power to carry it out, and then sit with the feelings and feel out all that ego. You know, your ego may be, you may have excitement around job A. You're going to be on TV, and you're going to, hundreds of people are going to like think you're amazing. So feel that out, go to the observer until it's totally, or do the Course in Miracles. This job is as meaningless as washing dishes, you know, which is as meaningless as putting a light bulb in, uh, in a thing. So when you strip out your ego excitement by it, and then your spirit will choose, because the spirit is always going to choose that which is in, in alignment with a higher vibration, and your ego. So you just, um, you just transcend, you just transcend your ego. That's another way of doing it, pray and transcend it. When you, when you render a job meaningless and you still want to do it, then that's a great job. Because your ego isn't, you know, like, um, because the ego traction is not there. You haven't got, like, the excitement, the excitement you've made meaningless, uh, the, the drama you've made meaningless. So, so, so uh, if there's boredom, you can transcend boredom. You can fill out boredom, go to the observer boredom. So, once you're fully in, the higher your level of consciousness in making that choice, the more you've taken out the temptation, yeah? So, if you transcend, you, I mean, if you were to transcend the world, there'd be no attraction or aversions to anything in the world, so the spirit would just intuitively guide you, non-stop, yeah? So, what would you say, acting on an intuition, because the spirit is guiding you, Yeah. would would not be right. Would be better to to transcend everything that comes up with that intuition, and then kind of go back to that. Or would you say like, if you're in a place where the spirit is guiding you, it's just so obvious that you just ah, like kind of. No, I mean, I mean, if you're in early, if you're in your early years of spiritual work, I would even tra I would transcend it. I would go to, especially with a job, um, I would do a lot of work around it. Um, so let's say you're, in, let's say you go to a spiritual group and you're in the observer, and you're in the witnesser, and then you have an intuition. This is good. I still wouldn't choose it because if it's an important decision, if it's not an important decision, of course, yeah, choose it. Like you know, shall I have a chicken sandwich or a salmon sandwich? I don't think you should do hours of work on that. But it's like you know, should I go to company A or company B? And it's like uh, because. In the observer, like uh, we had a question before on the video, in the observer, you're in, you're in the enlightened, seemingly enlightened or non-dual state. 
but it doesn't mean you've you've transcended everything in that place, in that situation. So you can still have a false reading. Because when you're in the observer, when you're feeling in the timeless now, it seems like everything's a good idea because you're, you're in an invincible state. You're in a state which is non-identified. Non but you can say, well, and in, that, in, that, in the state of the observer, you feel like you could go into a battlefield and you'd still be in the observer. But actually, unless you've transcended everything in a battlefield, it will hook you out of being in the observer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So one way to do it is to, is to um, if you can do research or, or go into that environment and see if you get pulled out of the observer and then transcend that, or just imagine what would be the things in that environment that you have to transcend and transcend those things as well. And then, uh, and then the intuition that comes will be clearer, uh, you know, because you can get, if you're new to spiritual work and you go in a non-dual state, uh, you, can, you, you, can, you can get an intuition, but it can be wrong uh, because you've not been in that environment and transcended everything in that environment. You can still get a good intuition, but you could get a wrong intuition because one of the things in the... when you're in those spiritual states, uh, if you're new, you can feel like you can handle anything in any situation and go anywhere, but that's not necessarily the case. So. Um, if I have something to do, um, it's like finding everything that could hook me in and transcending it, and then trusting that intuition. Or you're pre, you're pre sort of, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Yeah.